If you develop games or software for long enough, from time to time you'll probably run into a bug that just seems impossible. You check and recheck your logic, step through line by line in a debugger, exhaust every explanation you can think of, and it just doesn't make sense. This shouldn't be happening. Well, I ran into one of those bugs this week, and I'd like to take you along for the ride as I try every trick in my arsenal until hopefully I figure out what's going wrong. So here's the problem. When I fire a projectile, it appears to suddenly change direction for no apparent reason. This started quite a while ago, but I've been too busy with other things to really look into it. So let's take a look at the movement code. Initially, escaped origin is false. This is so it will not collide with the unit that's firing the projectile. Until it's escaped the origin, move and collide is being run in test mode, which means it won't actually move the object, it'll just return information about the collisions that would happen if it did. So it'll keep checking if there's a collision, and set escaped origin to true as soon as there isn't one. Meanwhile, it'll move the projectile by simply adding velocity times delta to the translation. This line here moves it vertically, so it appears to fall over time. Once a projectile has escaped the collision shape of the unit that fired it, it'll start actually using the collision information to deal damage to other objects, bounce off of them, or simply go away when hitting a wall if it's not bouncy. But for the sake of debugging, let's cut out most of this code and just simplify everything. Now it's just a move and collide, not in test mode, and this adjustment to the Y position. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Alright, I could have edited out that mistake, but I think it's worth pointing out that when you're debugging, sometimes you get tunnel vision, and it's easy to make little mistakes like that that help feed the appearance that the bug is impossible. If you have incorrect data from your experiments because you didn't really test what you thought you did, yeah, things won't make sense. Let's try move and slide instead. Okay, it's still changing direction despite my drastically simplified code. Now you might think it's bouncing off of something, and that's causing it to change direction. So I'm saving a copy of the initial velocity as seen when the object first enters the scene. So let's find out if the velocity is changing. The assert wasn't triggered, so somehow it's changing direction without changing velocity. Now the only way I could imagine that happening is if somehow rotation is involved. Perhaps move and slide is causing it to rotate on impact with something. So I'm going to set the rotation to zero on all axes both before and after move and slide. Well, that didn't change anything. So how is it changing direction if the velocity and rotation are remaining constant? I've set a breakpoint so I can take a closer look. First off, let's make sure this is where I expect it is. Yes, the projectile is nested under the region package, which is not moving. If I switch over to remote, I can look at the entire scene tree. As you can see, it shares a parent with the unit. So it definitely doesn't make sense that it could change direction while the unit remains still. What happens if instead of move and slide, I just add to the translation myself? Well, now it's moving in a straight line like I expect, so something very unexpected is somehow happening inside both move and slide and move and collide. That makes me wonder if it's a bug in the engine, but surely it would have been caught by now unless it's tied to some very uncommon circumstances. I already tried updating to the latest version, in case it is a bug that's already been fixed. Also, this was working fine in the past. So, what changed? This is where source control can really come in handy. Oh wow, it's been a long time since the game looked like this. It might be hard to see, but that projectile did fire in a straight line, and I'm still running on the latest engine, so it has to be something I've changed on my end. This is actually identical to what I had when I started debugging earlier today. The only reason it looks different is I already fixed a bug where it was colliding with the unit that fired it. At this point in history, the projectile was probably being created outside the unit's collision shape, so that wasn't a problem. But based on my experiments so far, I'm pretty sure this function is not to blame. It's got to be something about the way I've set up the scene. I've got a theory that this might be related to scaling. In more recent builds, I'm scaling the entire region package down. Now I remember reading something about not scaling collision shapes, but I'm not sure if this applies to transforms in the node hierarchy. Alright, this is a hacked up build where the scaling has been removed from the region package, everything else is scaled up to compensate, and I've also turned off the collision mask and all collision layers for the projectile so it cannot collide with anything. And still, it seems to be deflected to a different direction somehow. So now I'm repeating the experiment of cutting out most of the code. I'm resetting the rotation to zero on all axes, doing a simple move and collide, resetting rotation again, and I still have this vertical motion and it's still not moving in the right direction. I'm pretty sure it's changing direction, but it's a little bit harder to see at this scale. However, if I just move it myself by adding velocity times delta, it moves exactly as expected. So why doesn't that work with move and collide? The collision shape has no scaling. The projectile, no scaling. Region package, no scaling. 
Ship interior, no scaling. Ship template, no scaling. The director, no scaling. So there is no scaling happening anywhere in the node hierarchy. And once again, the projectile's collision mask and layer are completely empty. So it shouldn't be able to collide with anything. This leaves me with just two things to try. I can either binary search through my version history and try to find the exact commit that broke this, or I can step into the engine source code to observe what's actually happening in Move and Collide. Since it takes a while to iterate on going back to old versions, rebuilding, and testing, I've decided to step into Godot's code first. And I think I may have found something. It's setting a global transform here, but the motion offset happens to match the same motion vector I passed in. This might be a coincidence, but it might be expecting this vector to be in global space rather than relative to the parent node. I've made similar mistakes before where the documentation did say that vectors were in global space, although I don't see anything about that for move and collide. But looking at the node hierarchy, the ship does have a 90 degree rotation on the y-axis, which means it's impossible for my motion vector to be the same in global space. So that's got to be the problem, and I guess there's an easy way to confirm it. Okay, that was unexpected. Why did it hang? <sighs> Gotta love developing on Windows. For some reason, it hung. I mean, oh, black screen, that's new. I pressed Control delete like several minutes ago. The entire OS was brought down by whatever the heck went wrong with Godot. I mean, I can't stop my screen recording. I can't, I don't even know if that recording is going to be salvageable. I mean, I think I figured out my bug, but I'm not sure yet because Windows has just crashed and burned. Great. Are you serious? <sighs> So it's not running a debug build of the engine that caused it. I... This is the stable release build, and... Is it recovered? No. Can I stop it? At least I was able to stop it this time. Um, I don't know what would have happened if I left it running. Maybe it was a memory leak. Is that possible? There it is. What in the world? What in the world is going on here? Oh no, oh no, oh no. Stop. Stop. Abort. Oh no, what in the world? How? Well, my PC is hung yet again, despite hitting pause both in the Godot editor and in an attached Visual Studio debugger. So somehow the memory, I guess, kept ramping up until it brought the system to a crawl, despite, theoretically, the process being frozen. All right, it's a new day, I've had some time to think about it, and in retrospect, the original bug makes perfect sense. The movement was happening in two phases. At first it was moving in local space, and then after escaping the unit's collision shape, move and collide was moving it in global space, hence the change in direction. I'm still puzzled by that memory leak, but in retrospect, just converting the velocity vector to global space would include any offset from the scene's origin, so this could be a much larger vector than intended, and in some arbitrary direction not related to the direction the projectile was actually supposed to be moving. So maybe just moving it too far in one move and collide call is what's causing this huge memory usage, but regardless, I fixed it now. Basically, I'm just subtracting the global position of the projectile from this converted velocity vector to get just the movement in global space. And after undoing all my hackery and putting things back to normal, projectile firing is finally working. I've still got some more bugs to fix and I'll probably find more as I continue testing, which unfortunately means I am even further behind schedule. To be honest, the game probably will not be finished in 2020, and I hate to go back on my word after saying it would be, but I'm going to do whatever it takes to make this a good game, however long it takes. So I appreciate you sticking with me, it also really helps me out if you hit the like button, spread the word, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, thanks for watching.